Greetings, travelers! So, in the last episode, or tutorial, we covered how to do the images. So, in this one, and again, we're using custom main menu, and... The last episode, we did the images. The header, logo, I did the ring in the background, and then this image for the background. Today's tutorial, we're going to cover buttons. You know, the Minecraft buttons are nice, the gray... But we want something with more flair. So if you just take a look at the default ones, they do have these, unlike the images. This honestly doesn't have as much bearing either, but for the sake of consistency and keeping track of what you're doing, it's probably best to name this piece after whatever the button's supposed to do, like single player, multiplayer, mods, which gives you the mod list, options which lets you change the options in Minecraft quit heaven forbid somebody wants to stop playing language so that you can change the language type and then of course refresh which refreshes a screen now the first thing we're gonna do is again we're using the mod pack menu that I have on mine so again we're gonna do like we did last time we're gonna copy the entire button code that I have here now keep in mind that I have positioning and everything as well for where you can place the buttons. And then we will go back here and we will just replace the defaults. Now, I suggest remove, and in my code, remove the refresh button. One of the cool things that Lumion added was rather than have to have the button, now you can just hit control key and R, which will refresh. Not sure how that would work on a Macintosh. Uh, whatever the equivalent for refresh, maybe. Uh, Command R, maybe. Uh, that's something that you'd have to ask Lumion what that would be. But let's go ahead and place this in here. Now let me show you some of the items we've done here. So. In my case, because we're replacing the default image. If you don't specify a texture, it will use the default image. In this case, we're still doing the menu single player, but now I've added the texture for the button. And I'm going to show you a little bit about the button here in a minute that's important, but some key points that I want you to understand is the commas that you see are important. The last item does not need a, com a comma. So here. Now this one needs a comma because there's still the next button and then the next button. But the very last button in this list, if you look, does not have that. Uh, that's very important. If you don't do it right, you'll probably get the red message that says there's an error in your menu and it won't work. And if you don't figure it out and don't fix it, but go ahead and quit out of Minecraft and start up, it'll probably crash. So, for the buttons, here's a key point that you will need to make sure. So, let's go to where the button code is here. And there's my default button. Notice that it is two buttons. In my case, I've shaded one differently, so that way when you mouse over, it changes color. But this is important. The default code expects two different buttons. So, in order to make this work, you make your, you know, the easiest way, create your first button, like I did here. The optimum image size I've found is about 100 wide, anywhere from 25 to 50 high. My buttons are actually 100 by 50, and this is an example I mentioned in the previous tutorial about the image size being different than the width and height that you want the button. This is where it's important, because if you didn't put this, then it kind of cuts the button off. It just makes... It makes the button the right size, but it does it by cutting the image. If you put the image width and height, then when you add this, it shrinks the image to fit what you want the button size to be. So that's why this is important. Uh, but then once you create your main button, literally double the size of the button. In the case of this one, the original image was 100 by 50. I doubled that and made it 100 by 100, so the top half is my main button, the bottom half is my secondary button. 
And if we go in here and then we go ahead and save and reload, now you'll see. And see how when I hover over, the image changes color. Now, the text menu single player by default, that's what it does. It shows the word single player, multiplayer, mods, etc. Uh, now, if you want the text to have a different color, in this case, I did normal text. This is a, a integer for the color. There's a few websites. If I can remember, I'll add a link to the one I use. But you put in the hex code for the color, and it gives you the integer color you need to put in here. And then hover color is, of course, when you hover your mouse over, what color the text changes to when you hover over it. Center, all my buttons in this case are based off of the center of the menu. And it's real easy to get positioning once you know your exact size of the buttons. So the first one is single player, and I put it at minus 150, which means it starts right here and goes to here. Position is zero, so it's literally the center of the window, but shifted over 150. So when I did the multiplayer, the buttons are 100 wide. So literally, you take 100 off of that, that'll shuffle it over, and that'll keep the spacing perfect. Uh, and then, of course, the next part is the action of the button. What do you want the button to do? There's a lot of defaults, and Lumion has on his pages for the Curse Forge, he has a list of a lot of the default actions that are built in. Uh, you can also do special actions, like if you have modded buttons. Uh, Open Eye is one that comes to mind. A lot of people put that in mod packs, and Open Eye just a brief is a crash reporting system but it's not built in by default you have to know the button code for that and to do that when you first start up any buttons that are not default minecraft in the error log or in the the log when it's loading there will be a section that shows you any other buttons that custom main menu found and it'll give you a button code and and I'll show you a little bit more of that as we go down in the the buttons. But of course, you know, the type is going to be an open a GUI because any other page is pretty much going to be a GUI. You can also do open link. Uh, you can also do, you know, uh, there's a couple others I think you can do, but the primary ones are open GUI, open, you know, or link. Uh, and in this case, this opens up the Minecraft single player where it shows you a list of all the worlds you have. Multiplayer shows you a list of all the servers you have. Uh, and it's the same same premise. And then, you know, ideally, just if you want to hover color, unless you want to be weird and have everything a different color for every button, just copy pretty much everything that stays the same for each button just to save you some typing. In the case here, open GUI multiplayer, extras and DLC. You know, and the buttons, just use the same texture. There's no reason to keep repeating it. This one's a little different, and this is going to be in a later tutorial, but this one has a custom GUI, which we will go in more detail. Uh, I'll be doing a newer video for that. There is one already on my channel for the custom GUIs, but we'll go a little bit more into that in a later episode of the series and probably correct a few things. Uh, but then you'll see options, open eye, quit, language. Now, open eye, this is where I was talking about. This one's a little different. When you have a button that's normal, like the options, multiplayer and stuff, you will see action type open GUI, and then the GUI, and the name of the option that's opening. With modded buttons, in the case of like open eye, you don't want text because that's what overlays here. So if you leave it blank, then it doesn't it won't put any text, or in the case of if you look here, I typed what I wanted and that's what comes in. Uh, but with open eye being a modded button you'll see that for the most part everything is the same but you'll notice instead of an action section you're going to note that this is a wrapped button in other words you know the button code in this case open eye is 666 uh, but it's going to create it's going to know that when you click that button 
this is the function that it's going to do is that mod button. Uh, and then the rest of them are pretty much the same. Now, of course, quit, there's no action type or anything. So instead of having the GUI, because there is none, it just quit. And it knows quit means we're shutting down. Language, just like the other one, open GUI languages. Now, Lumion does have a list of all the different default that you default GUIs that you can get on his pages. So if you want any information regarding some specific Minecraft ones, that's the place to go. What we'll show you here, there's the one for settings. There's the one for languages. There's the one to quit. Now OpenEye, because it's one of those modded buttons, only shows up if there's a crash. Otherwise, the button doesn't show up. And by using that wrap button, it mimics that same behavior so that button won't show up. But if you notice, the same thing with these each of the buttons that I created, I created a top one and a bottom one. In my case, I made them different colors. Now, this is going to be very significant because remember how I told you about the image width, image height, and then the width and height. If you notice, on the menu, they are very, very small. So, in this case, we still have the original button width and height but I wanted it to be this way and that's why this is important so it knows to shrink the image rather than cut the image but to make it so that they look relatively round you'll notice on this image well this one isn't the best example so let's go here notice how on these I made them elongated so that when the image is shrunk down this becomes more round so then you get the button here that looks more normal Uh, now, some of the other things you can do is tooltips. So that's what, you know, when you hover over, you get the little black box. So if you want to use images, but you still want to give players an idea of what it is that they're looking at, tooltips will work so that, that way they know, oh, okay, so choose my settings. So I should be able to do options or I'm going to quit now. So that would be a good use of the Adventure Another Day, you know, in this case, Adventure Another Day, but the tooltip in general. Uh, and then, you know, how I, I just went kind of fancy because I like doing things a little different. But, you know, same thing, how I address the... But that's all there is for the buttons. Uh, again, as I said in the previous tutorial, make sure that you... You know, the best way is to build it in the normal default size so that when you enlarge, you're still going to get gaps. But if you do it right, you'll notice how it the menu still looks fine. There's more space around it, which there should be. You're making the menu larger. Even with the Minecraft default, it just increases the space around the button. It doesn't create larger buttons unless you have a specific option of auto which then resizes everything based on the size of the screen but if you're like me and you pick normal or large they stay that size no matter what size the screen is uh, but the positioning's the same because it's relative so there's still all three of those buttons down there the regular buttons are still towards the center so everything still looks very nice and is set up well and you know does a good job so that's going to be it for this tutorial, and in the next one we will cover some of the text functions. But for now, thank you for stopping by, and have a great day.